to make a film that would inspire people. But the more I looked around at my generation, I realized that I wanted to make something that would communicate the truth about who we are and allow us to believe in something real and allow us to understand that we don't have to accept the ways of the past and we are free to build the world that we want. If only we realize our potential. I came across members of my generation who were devoting their lives to peace and progress and beauty. And so I asked them, what kind of generation are we? If I could sum up our generation in one word, I would say it's lost. I would argue we're the one of the only species that has ever contemplated our own extinction. It's quite possible that we may be the only species that can avoid our own extinction. Where, where are all the people that you think are involved in uh, this movement for change or making things different or better? We are given a destiny as individuals and as a generation. And so I wondered, what will we do? Being lost is kind of a good thing if you're actively trying to find your way. If you're not trying to find your way, which is this is where the problem lies in, in modern media and, and modern culture, is that if you're, if, you're, if you're a lost person, you don't know exactly why you're on, the, on earth and you don't know exactly what you want to do with your life, there's more than enough people and companies out there that are going to take that energy and take your destiny from you and control it and use it. My name is Aaron Elton. I'm 26 years old. If you were to if you were to sum up everything of what I do into into one sort of category, it would be I'm a, I, I'm a philosopher, and I'm a truth seeker, and and then I'm a beyond that I'm a I'm an action based uh, producer. I was focusing a lot on uh, producing media for for musicians that were speaking in their own indigenous language. Yeah. Two, five, six, the area card. No house squad on your door. This is how we do. I do what I do because it's something that I can look back on when I'm an old person and say, yes, I, I did the absolute best that I could to be a good person. The only question that you will ever have to answer is, who are you? My name is David Eby, and I'm the executive director of the BC Civil Liberties Association, and I'm 33 years old. At my call ceremony, the executive director of Pivot, John Richardson, came up to me, and on the back of the program for the call ceremony, he'd written a job offer, and it was six months um, based on a $24,000 a year salary, no benefits, no job security, and of course I took the job, right? And that, that was a major turning point for me. If I had turned down that job and said, no, I need to like get my chops, whatever, I need to learn about what it means to be a lawyer before I go into activism, I, I don't think I would have gotten out of um, that kind of employment. So taking that job, taking that risk was the best decision I ever made. I think that um, the potential for change is huge. You know, I think that environmental sustainability is within our reach. Um, I think that social sustainability, the end of homelessness, um, is within our reach. If I had to boil it down to one thing, uh, I would say energy is my primary motivation to 
to build sculptures and specifically energy awareness. My name is Lee Christie. I'm 29 years old and uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, for my livelihood, my I suppose you could say my career is engineering. If we don't understand energy as a civilization here on planet Earth, we're doomed. If we don't understand how it works, where it comes from, how to conserve it, and how to produce it in a sustainable and environmentally friendly manner, we have condemned ourselves to a dark, cold, artless, and very, very heartless world. We've been brought up and we've been saturated with this whole concept of capitalism and just take what you want, get what you can, money is king. It all has to do with self-control. You know, how much are you consuming? What kind of things are you consuming? How do you spend your money and how do you spend your time? And it's a psychological issue. It's a personal issue of where do you stand as a person, as a populace, as a society, as a nation with regards to these problems. The counterculture and the hippies and the boomers and the cynicism that came out of that when everyone kind of bailed on it and um, turned into the corporate uh, grabbing generation that we all know as the boomers um, that destroyed the planet and created the 60 hour work week again and uh, rolled back all the advances that could have happened because of their own greed. Just to be a little bit cynical and a little bit like over broad in terms of the boomers, there are lots of wonderful boomers, but in terms of the product of that generation, I think that's what we can thank them for. We're very similar to the, uh, to the baby boomer generation because we are, the, we are the children of that generation. We're dealing with the same issues that they were dealing with back then, except now we're dealing with much more widespread problems. The problems have ballooned and gotten bigger. Um, that doesn't mean that they're harder to solve because the solution was always the same. The boomers could have had whatever they wanted and they created the world that they wanted for themselves. And a lot of people looking back at that, including the boomers and us, and saying, that's not what we want. I think most people are very uncomfortable, when I say most, I mean like people of all ages, are very uncomfortable when there's a problem in the world and they feel powerless to prevent it. Cynicism is a way of reacting to those problems in such a way that absolve, absolves them of responsibility. You say, oh, we can't do it, we can't accomplish world peace. You know, what's the point in that? Where's the value in that? Who are you? So you can say, oh, it's, there's never going to be world peace. Or, you know, uh, we're doomed to failure. The, we're like locusts plaguing the earth. And we're like a cancer that's on its surface. And we, the Mother Earth would be better off if we were just extinct. These kinds of ways of thinking are very anti-humanist, obviously. And, um, and don't acknowledge the immense beauty that humans bring to the world. These are things that make us a beautiful species. So yes, we're under threat and yes, there are problems in the world, but people should be motivated by those problems. Those, those problems should be sources of inspiration, not sources of pessimism. There's no time for uh, defeatist mentalities. I don't associate with anybody who, who comes into my realm and has a defeatist mentality. I just, it's very difficult to deal with because I just don't compute. I say, you know, logically, give me a reason why you want to see things negatively, why you would want to predict a negative future. You're lazy. <laughs> that's, that's all I can come up with. <laughs> the weird thing is, I talk to, I talk to boomers all the time, right? They're, um, they're very jaded. Um, they've been around, they've seen stuff. They're like, your generation doesn't get involved. And that's so weird to me because the only people that I see that are out there and involved, the only people who are volunteering with the association, the only people who are putting in the time, who are really super dedicated to the issues, are young people. It's a massive, enormous cohort or generation or group, and it's all over the world, and they're connected by the internet, they're, they're motivated by uh, a, a massive amount of readily accessible information at their fingertips, and an incredibly positive message where they've seen that if you put in the effort, you can make a difference.
So many people that have the ability to make change and are motivated to make change that it's to call it a movement isn't sufficient. It's everybody. <laughs> Whether or not we succeed in changing the world will depend on which side of the coin comes up for us um, and which side is emphasized. And that will come down to individuals rather than the whole generation because some of us will be very ego driven consumerists and some of us will do some really neat stuff. Um, and I think that, I'm optimistic that the people doing the really neat stuff will outweigh the people doing the self-driven, ego-driven, consumer stuff. So I think our generation is, is uh, really capable of, of committing mass change like it's never been seen before. But it's only going to happen if we decide to do that, if every person decides to do that. I've always believed that the world was a good place and that there was a benevolent force helping us connect to each other, understand each other, and love each other. It seemed like there was a transformation happening, a quantum leap in consciousness maybe. I began to think that collectively we could make a change. We have a choice to spark a golden age and to create a paradise on earth. If I had to sum up our generation in one word, I'd, I'd use the word love. Love for the human race, love for planet Earth, and love uh, for creative expression um, embodies what our generation's all about.